I'm DeMarcus Casildres, the Linux Product Service Coordinator. Today, I'm going to show you how to repair a refrigerant leak in the Linux Environ Core System. Okay, the, the tools and equipment that you would need in order to repair a refrigerant leak on the Linux new Environ Core System. First of all, you're going to need your safety material, your safety glasses, your gloves. Then moving on, you're going to need the aluminum flux, a number two torch tip, a wire brush, needle nose pliers, regular pliers, sheet metal strips, R410A refrigerant gauges, aluminum tape, portable torch kit, nitrogen, vacuum pump, R410A portable recovery machine, R410A refrigerant, and a R410A filter dryer. The first step you want to do is to ensure that the unit is turned off. So you turn it off at the disconnect using the lockout and tagout procedure. After you do that, you get your refrigerant gauges, which is your R410A refrigerant gauges, and install them on the suction and discharge line of the unit. Locate the damaged area and verify the leak site using industry standard leak detection practices. Once you turn the unit off and installed your refrigerant gauges, you want to ensure that all the refrigerant is out of the unit by using the recovery machine. Depending upon the location of the leak, you might have to remove fins. You might not have to remove fins in order to repair this leak. Keep in mind, if there's a leak at the manifold, do not attempt repair. Using long needle nose pliers, you want to remove the fins above the damaged area and below the damaged area, not to exceed one inch. So you just remove the fins working the needle nose pliers side by side, side to side. Right now I'm removing the fins above the damaged area. You want to try to clean it out as much as possible so that the heat will flow properly. Constantly removing fins, working the side-by-side -side motion. Use a small stainless steel brush to clean out, you know, just loose pieces and ensure that you don't contaminate this area. So you just go side to side, getting all the loose fins out of there before you tend to braze. This step is optional, depending on the brazing experience of the technician making the repair. Using sheet metal pieces, you want to shield around the area so that heat will not damage the rest of the coil. You want to use foil tape to hold the sheet metal pieces against the coil around the repair area. This is what it would look like after you're finished. Using a portable oxyacetylene tank and a number two torch tip, you want to try to work the flame around the area to ensure that you do not overheat the coil itself because it will damage. So you just got to keep the flame moving. That's why we suggest using a number two torch tip. So you zero in on the area. As it heats up, it takes a little while. So you just want to keep the flame moving. OK, there we go. Once the repair is complete, you want to install a new filter dryer and then you want to pressurize the system with nitrogen to ensure that the leak is repaired. Once you ensure that the leak has been re properly repaired and the nitrogen held for about 30 minutes, you want to blow the nitrogen and then you want to install a vacuum pump in order to pull the unit down to 500 microns. Now that the unit has been fully evacuated, you want to charge the system with R14A refrigerant using the nameplate on the side of the unit. After the repairs are made, 
return the unit to normal operation.